Hey guys, it's Brother Billy here. I hope you all are doing well. Can you believe it is October already? Uh, we are definitely into the heart of uh, fall now. And uh, notice yesterday we had the harvesters were out there working on uh, collecting the peanuts around the house. And it won't be long and they'll be out there doing the cotton as well. And we're just right into the middle of fall. And I know that's some good news because we got fall break coming up next week. And I know you guys, uh, hopefully that's going to be uh, going on in your schools, and I know you're looking forward to that. And uh, we're absolutely enjoying this beautiful weather. Of course, we got some rain coming this weekend, so you guys be ready for that. Uh, we may have a little tropical storm coming up our way, so you guys keep an eye on the weather. And we're definitely going to be praying for those uh, down on the coast who've already seen a lot of rough weather uh, this year. And we're going to continue to keep them in prayer. Uh, one announcement I did want to share with you guys, uh, we are going to do a trunk or treat this year uh, for Halloween. Uh, normally, uh, we would do a fall festival type setup in our Life Center, but just because of the situation on things this year, uh, we're going to do a trunk or treat instead. Um, so that means uh, some folks in the area, they're going to decorate the back of their uh, cars and trucks and that sort of thing and park around the, uh, the parking lot next to the church and uh, we'll do uh, candy and stuff like that. And we're going to do that on Saturday, October 31st, uh, starting about 5 o'clock and going until dark. Uh, so put that on your calendars. We are planning to do a trunk or treat this year. And while we're at it, we're going to set up a registration table. Um, those who are looking forward to coming back and joining us on Wednesday night, uh, we want to get some updated information from you, contact information. Um, we're not too far away from, from getting back into our, our normal schedule. And so we're going to need your information so we can uh, contact you when that's coming up. So you definitely want to come out on October 31st, join us for Trunk or Treat, uh, get some information uh, for us. And then we're also, I'm planning right now to do an open house on our new children's area. So if you want to come see what we've been working on in our children's ring, that's going to be just for you guys. All right, brand new children's wing. I hope you guys are excited about it. I hope to do an open house that night and show you all what's going on. And it'll be a really big reveal. Now, talking about revealing things and revelation, we're starting a new series this week. So uh, the last few weeks, we've been doing a series on God is and talking about characteristics of God. Well, we're going to be doing, uh, going into a new series uh, that's titled The Bible Is, and we're going to talk about the things that the Bible is, the things that we need to learn about. Um, now, there's two definitions I want to introduce you guys to today because we're going to be talking uh, about these a little bit as we're going to be reading through Scripture. Uh, the first is attributes. Now, an attribute is a quality, a, a characteristic, or a feature of someone or something. So, for instance, if we want to talk about my attributes, well, I wear glasses. That, that's one of my attributes. Uh, I typically have some kind of facial hair, usually a goatee is what I wear, so that's one of my attributes. I am a Florida Gators fan, go Gators, so that is one of uh, my attributes. So these are, are different characteristics about me. Uh, now, revelation is another word, uh, especially we're talking about today that the Bible is God's revelation. Well, a revelation is the act of making something known. See, the Bible uh, is God's revelation because it reveals attributes of God. It reveals characteristics of God, uh, reveals his laws. It reveals his teachings. It also reveals his love for us. There's so much in God's word, and it's all about revealing himself to us. So that's why it's very important that we're going to be talking about how the Bible is God's revelation. So let's kind of dive in here, and we'll ask you a few questions. First of all, what is the most beautiful thing that you guys have ever seen in nature? You think about that for a minute. Maybe there's some, it's been a place that you visited before. Um, we live in a very beautiful area here. Maybe it's just going out in your backyard and, and seeing uh, the mountains and the trees. Um, but what is the most beautiful thing that you have ever seen in nature? I think one of the things I absolutely love, I used to do a lot of fishing. And uh, when I used to fish out in the Gulf of Mexico, we would go so far offshore that you couldn't see land. And a lot of times we would just spend the night out on the water. And you'd wake up the next morning and you could actually see the sun beginning to rise. And in the evenings when we were out there, you'd see the sun setting. And those sunrises and sunsets were some of those beautiful things that I'd ever seen in nature. 
How about an unusual animal or plant that you have seen or heard about? And I want to show you guys some pictures here because uh, my wife, Miss Danielle, she raises carnivorous plants. And I've recently just built a new greenhouse for Earth, so she's got a place to put those. Um, but she grows carnivorous plants, and these are plants that eat bugs. And we've got pitcher plants, and the bugs crawl down inside of there, but they can't crawl out. Uh, you've got fly traps that have little hairs on the inside of their, uh, of their mouths, so to speak. So if a, a, an insect brushes up against that, it, it closes on the insect. Uh, we've got some that uh, are real sticky, so the insects get stuck to them. So there's a lot of different types of carnivorous plants, and those are definitely very, very unusual, and they live in places where the soil isn't good, so eating bugs is how they get their nutrients. So that's pretty cool there. Now here's a question for you. How do you feel when you see something amazing or unusual in nature? I mean, think about that for a minute. It's something that you have just never seen before, something that is so unique and something that's so awesome. How does that make you feel? Well, I want you to be thinking about those things because here's the thing. God uses creation to show us his power from the, from the vast universe, going out and seeing uh, you know, all the stars and the galaxies and the moon, just so many things in the universe, to the most delicate petals on a flower. We can see detail and we can see order from our creator. And you know, all people can see this amazing beauty and amazing order and the, the amazing power of nature and the majesty and the beauty of the world and the universe around us. It shows us that there is a God. But see, God also gave us the word. That's the Bible. And that tells us who he is and it reveals everything that we need to know about him. So let's jump into God's word this morning. And there's there's Four points uh, that we're going to look at today. First, God reveals himself through nature. Second, man knows there is a God. Third, God reveals who he is through the Bible. And then finally, the Bible reveals how we can be right with God. So we're going to first start today over in the book of Psalms. And I'm going to turn over to Psalms uh, chapter 19. And we're going to look at uh, verses 1 through 4 and see what this psalm has to say about how God reveals himself through nature. So here we go, Psalms chapter 19, verses 1 through uh, 4, and it says this, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims the work of his hands. Day after day they pour out speech. Night after night they communicate knowledge. There is no speech, there are no words, their voice is not heard. Their message has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the earth. So we see that the heavens declare uh, the works of the glory of God. It says the sky proclaims the work of his hands. And it says day after day they pour out their speech. Now, the moon doesn't look down and speak to us in words, right? And you look at the most beautiful flower. It doesn't look up to you and say, let me tell you about God. That, that's not how that works, right? So we got some metaphorical language here. In fact, it says there is no speech and there are no words. Their voice is not heard, but their message has gone out to all of the earth and their words to the end of the world. So we can look at creation and it reveals God. There is beauty, uh, there is order, and there is a design in nature that reveals that there is a creator who made all things. It wasn't just an accident. It wasn't something that just happened to happen. God is a creator, and he was very, very specific in how he created nature. Now, I'm going to flip back over to uh, the book of Job, and I'm going to look at Job chapter 12, and we're going to look at verses 7 through 10. And this is what it says here. But ask the animals, and they will instruct you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? The life of every living thing is in his hand, as well as the breath of all mankind. Now, again, we've got some metaphorical language going on here. I mean, you don't go up to uh, a dog and say, 
teach me about God, and the dog is going to answer you with some, you know, big words and that sort of thing. He's going to wag his tail at you, and he's going to bark, and he's going to want you to scratch his ears, right? But if we look at the animals, we look at the birds, we look at the earth, we look at the fish, we do see that there is an order, and we can learn from them. So we can see how God reveals himself through nature. Now, second, here's the thing. Man knows that there is a God, right? I mean, I think instinctually, with our instincts, we can know that there is a God. Now, there's people out there who do their best to try and deny God. All right? There are those who claim to be atheists, that they believe that God does not exist in any way, shape, or form. And then there's other peoples out there that may believe that there's a God, but they're just not really sure. And there's those that they're definitely very religious. But I think God created us in a way to know that there is a God. In fact, if we turn over uh, to Romans uh, chapter 1, and this is one of my most favorite chapters in the Bible because it really speaks a lot about a lot of things, especially about making sure that we're thinking rightly about God. But in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, it says this. He says, For his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. So the Bible says, look, God is invisible. All right, God is spirit. We can't physically see God. And so there's certain... Uh, attributes of God, characteristics, qualities of God that are invisible, his eternal power and his divine nature. But he made the world in a way that we could see his power. We could see and understand his nature through everything that he has made. And so we are without excuse. As a people, uh, we cannot have an excuse to say, well, I didn't know that there was a God. We can clearly see from all around us that there is a God. When we, when we look at nature, there is order, there is detail. We see the power and the beauty of nature, and we see that there's a God in it. You know, there's, if you look at creation, let's just take it to hum, human beings for a moment. Just think about the intricate details of just the eye itself. The, the rods and the cones and the way the, the pupil works and the iris works and all these little things to make the eyes be able to see. And there's such tiny, minute, microscopic details at work there. So from the, from the smallest things such as the eye to the, to the big mass of things to, you know, maybe just looking at the water cycle or thinking about a harvest moon. You know, we have harvest moons this time of year. And this is the one time of year for a couple of months where the moon tends to stay up longer and is brighter. And it's right at the time that we need to be harvesting. So it gives our farmers extra time to harvest. Think about an eclipse. The size of the moon is just right to give us a perfect eclipse. So just the edges of the sun are around it to make this, this beautiful scene. All of these things, there is just perfect order. And God has created it in such a way that we can recognize that he is at work. So we know that there is a God, and we are without any kind of excuse to say that there is no God, because clearly the evidence of God is all around us. So God reveals himself through nature, and man knows that there is a God, but he also reveals who he is through the Bible. You see, there's two kinds of, of revelation. Uh, we call one kind general revelation. Uh, this is how God has generally revealed himself to all people and at all time. And we see that through his creation. So we can all recognize that there is a God. But here's the thing. That's not enough for us. We need very specific revelation about who God is and how he wants us to live and how we can have a right relationship with him. And that specific revelation comes through his Bible. He gives us very, very specific information. And you see, God wants everyone to know him and to know about the free gift of salvation that he offers. And understand, he offers it to everyone. That's why God gave us his word, the Bible. Everything that we need to know about God is revealed in Scripture. 
So I'm going to turn over to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. Uh, Timothy um, was a guy who was mentored uh, by the Apostle Paul. And uh, he was a young guy when he became a pastor. And, um, but he, uh, he became a great pastor in a, in a city of Ephesus. And Paul would write him letters from time to time to encourage him. And we find this passage here in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And first I'm going to read verses 14 through 15. And it says this, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed. You know those who taught you. And you know that from childhood you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So we see uh, that according to the word here, the scriptures are able to lead us to Jesus and provide salvation for us. And that is amazing. And, and Timothy here was taught from a very early age. Uh, he was taught from childhood um, by his mother and by his grandmother. And how important it is for you guys uh, to learn from an early age about God's word and about the things God wants us to know about him and about his son Jesus and how we can be saved through Jesus and about his Holy Spirit who comes to live inside of us and teach us. And these things are revealed to us through the Bible. That's why it's so important that we, that we spend time reading the Bible and studying the Bible and asking questions about the Bible when you have them. Because God reveals who he is through the Bible. And finally, the Bible reveals how we can be right with God. You see, Scripture tells us that we are sinners. Now, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We know that we uh, have wronged uh, God. We have violated his laws. But the amazing thing is that the Bible also teaches that God made a way for us to be right with him. God wasn't happy that we were separated from him. We are his creation. In fact, the Bible says that we are made in his image. So he loves us. He wants to be in a relationship uh, with us. So he needed uh, to let us know that there was a way to be made right with him. And that is revealed in the Bible. In fact, the Bible equips the believer to please God and all he does by revealing how God wants us to live. So let's look at these next couple of verses here. We're going to pick up uh, in uh, 2 Timothy 3, and I'm going to go and read verses 16 and 17 to you guys, and this is what it says. All Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good word. So first it says that all Scripture is inspired by God. The literal translation of that is that all Scripture is God-breathed. We believe uh, that God inspired uh, normal men to pen the words of the Bible. But God breathed into them in such a way that he used uh, their emotions and their qualities and their characteristics to write the Bible, but in such a way that it was absolutely perfect and it was in every word exactly as God is intended. So the Bible is originally written is without error absolutely perfect and there to teach us everything that we need to know and in fact it says it's profitable for teaching for rebuking for correcting and for training in righteousness so that the man of god may be complete and equipped for every good work so we said that the bible is profitable for teaching like when you guys go to school right you have somebody teaching you and you have textbooks that are there to teach you things that you didn't know and once you're taught, these are now things that you know and that you can use in life. Well, the Bible is the same way. It teaches you the things that you need to know. But it's also there for rebuking. It means the Bible calls us out when we're doing something wrong. So if we're, we're living a life or maybe we're lying to people, and then we read in the Bible that it says that lying is wrong, all right, so now the Bible is calling us out. It's saying we're living a life that we're not supposed to live by lying to other people. So the Bible rebukes us. It tells us that we are wrong uh, by lying. And there, there's all kinds of sins that we find that we do that the Bible tells us we're wrong to do. So it teaches us. It rebukes us. It is for correcting. So the Bible not only tells us the things that we're doing wrong, but it tells us how to live correctly instead, the right way 
to live. So it not only comes in and says, lying is wrong, you shouldn't lie, but it also goes in and says that we should speak truth. So we learn these things from the Bible. It corrects our actions. The Bible also says that it is there for, for training in righteousness. Now, some of you guys may do sports or you may do music or these different things where you have to, to train to get better, right? Well, the Bible trains us in right living. As we read through the Bible, as we learn through the Bible, it, it corrects our actions. It shows us how we're supposed to live, and we, we train ourselves to live rightly before God, and we learn these things through the Bible. And it says so that we may be complete and equipped for every good work. You know, if I go into battle, or maybe I even go into a sports game, I want to make sure that I have the proper equipment. Otherwise, I'm going to get hurt. Something isn't going to go well. Um, you know, if I go into a baseball game equipped with a tennis racket, that's not going to work either. Well, the Bible equips us so that we can go out and do the good works. In fact, Ephesians 2.10 says that we are created uh, in the image of Christ uh, to do the good works that he has prepared for us to do. So we need to be properly equipped so we can go out and do those good works. And the Bible equips us for that. So I want to remind you guys, God reveals himself through nature, and man knows there is a God, and we get that through general revelation, but then God also provides specific revelation by revealing who he is through the Bible, and the Bible reveals how we can be right with God. So our memory verse this week is Romans chapter 1, verse 20. We've already talked about that verse once before, this idea that we see God in um, in creation, and so we have no excuse. So here's our memory verse for his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. So I would encourage you guys, write that verse down, uh, maybe put it on your, uh, on your mirror in your bathroom, uh, maybe carry it with you through school, and then every once in a while take a look at that verse and work on memorizing it, because it's important to memorize the Bible, because this is God's revelation. We want to learn it. We want to know it. And this is a great word to remember uh, that God has revealed himself through nature and that we have no excuse. So here's some questions for you guys. How have you seen God's power in nature? Think about some of the things that you've seen. What have you seen that God has revealed himself in nature? And what have you learned about God in Scripture this week? Have you been reading your Bible? Are there things you're learning about God? If not, I would encourage you uh, to pick up your Bible and begin to read it. Uh, and if you haven't done that in a while, I always recommend you start in the book of John. That's a great place to start uh, that really teaches us a lot about God and about Jesus. And then think about what you learn about God in Scripture. And what is one way you can learn about God this week? So think about some things that you can do this week so that you can learn about God. You know, nature reveals that there is a creator God. And no one could ever deny this truth. There are people who are a tribe, but if you look at nature and you look at creation, you cannot deny that there is a God. And the Bible reveals details of who God is and what he's done for us. And we can never know all there is to know about God. But we can commit to being a lifelong studier of the Bible so we can tell others about who God is and we can share what we've learned about God and encourage them to do so. Now, if you guys have questions, I encourage you to email me. In fact, if you go to our website, mounthopebaptistal.com, uh, down on our, our kids page, uh, there's a little button. Um, it's an email button, and you can click on that, and you can send me a message and uh, send me some questions, or you can call up to the church office. Uh, either way, you can ask your questions. I'll be more than happy to get back with you guys and help you in any way that I can. So I hope you guys uh, take a moment today, look outside, look at nature, look at the amazing things that God has done. But more importantly, Spend a little time in your Bible.
spend a little time reading, getting to know who God is. All right, guys, I love y'all. I hope you have a wonderful wake, and uh, we'll talk to you next Wednesday. God bless. We'll see you next time.